Let the transformation be a linear transformation from R2 to P2. Is T onto, is T one to one? Looking at the properties of onto transformations and one to one transformations, we will focus on the property that if the transformation matrix has a pivot in every row, the transformation is onto, and if the transformation matrix has a pivot in every column, the transformation is one to one. Let's start with onto. To be onto, every degree two polynomial in the codomain, or P2, has at least one corresponding input vector x in R2. To test for this, let's let the polynomial px squared plus qx plus r be a polynomial in the codomain. Then there must be at least one a and b such that the transformation of vector a, b equals px squared plus qx plus r. So if we look back at our transformation, this indicates that 2a plus b, the coefficient of x squared, must equal p, 4a plus 2b, the coefficient of x, must equal q, and 3a minus 4b must equal the constant r, which gives us a system with three equations and two unknowns, shown here on the left. Now if we write the corresponding matrix equation, the coefficient matrix is the transformation matrix. So if we call this matrix A, and write it in reducer echelon form, if there's a pivot in every row, the transformation is onto. But if we stop here for a second, if we have three rows and two columns, we're not gonna be able to have a pivot in every row, and therefore the transformation is not going to be onto. But I'll go ahead and show matrix A in reducer echelon form. Notice how we have pivots in row one and row two, but not row three. The transformation is not onto. Again, this means that for every degree two polynomial in the codomain, there is not at least one corresponding input vector x in R2. So there are some polynomials in P2 where there is no corresponding input vector x in R2. For a quick example, let's say we selected the polynomial where P, Q, and R were all equal to one. This corresponding augmented matrix would be the augmented matrix shown here in the lower left-hand corner. If we write this in reducer echelon form, notice how the last row is zero, zero, one, which means the system is inconsistent, indicating for the polynomial when P, Q, and R are all one, there is no corresponding vector x in R2. The second example just shows the polynomial where P is one, Q is two, and R is one, and notice how this results in a solution which indicates there is a corresponding vector x in R2. And now see if the transformation is one to one. To be one to one, Every degree two polynomial in the codomain, or P2, has at most one corresponding input vector x in R2. So we'll assume the same polynomial in P2, or the codomain, the polynomial px squared plus qx plus r. To be one to one, there must be at most one a and b, such that the transformation of the vector equals px squared plus qx plus r. So the result is the same system of equations, the same matrix equation, and the same transformation matrix in reducer echelon form. But notice now here we do have pivots in every column, which indicates the transformation is one to one. And again, this should make sense because if we have a pivot in every row, then there are no free variables, and therefore the system will have either zero or one solutions, which does indicate every polynomial in the codomain will have at most one, meaning zero or one, corresponding input vectors x in R2. I hope you found this helpful.